Mason Ziegler on the pole. Hudson O'Neill on the outside. A $56,000 payday awaits the winner. The 53rd World 100 is underway. Nine of the top 10 starters have never won this race. Mason Ziegler, one of those down the back straight away in the 25Z. Hudson O'Neill, and we've got a caution. And on the racetrack, before we can get a half a lap in, and apparently we've got debris somewhere on the racetrack, guys. I'm wondering if maybe it was just an aborted start, if maybe the 25s, okay, yeah, okay, they're going right. to put, oh, man. Wow, they are going to yep. say that the 25Z of Mason Ziegler jumped okay. the start, and so he goes back a row. They do not get a warning. They're one warning. Was Race in the director driver's Eric meeting. Grigsby tells him in the driver's yep, meeting, James, yes, sir, that is the word that was just given to us from race control. So that will put Chris Ferguson on the pole for the 53rd World 100. Hudson O'Neill on the outside, and we are going green here at Eldora. Ziegler, who led laps here in the dirt late model dream, back in June. Ferguson down the back straight away. O'Neill battles, they go side by side into turn three. Ferguson forges ahead. Here comes Ziegler in third. One lap in the books, and Fergie leads at Eldora. Chris Ferguson out in front in the World 100. Mason Ziegler trying to rebound out the inside of Hudson O'Neill. They go side by side momentarily for second. Hut now trying to get a run on the outside of Chris Ferguson. In turns three and four. Off corner number four. Fergie still leads, and Ziegler will have second that time at the strike. Hudson O'Neill, though, James going to try to get a run. Back to the outside of Mason Ziegler down the back straight away. She's looking good early on. Throw these three under a blanket. Three laps in the books. Still Fergie and Ziggy pushes hard coming off the corner. Allows the one of O'Neill to get by. Seven point and fourth. Moran fifth. Matt six. Ferguson the first. Uh, Faker rather seven. That is Shirley Bronson and Gusta in your top ten. Right now, Chris Ferguson and his father, Brian Kennard. They own that 22. Nothing but bad luck the last few years here at Eldora. Right now, out in front. Looking for the biggest win of his racing career as he heads down the back right away. They're side by side for a second, Dustin, between Mason Ziegler and Hudson O'Neill. Ziegler trying to overcome that start that put him back a row as he's got to run on the inside of Hudson O'Neill. And on lap five, he'll reclaim that second position away from the Rocket One. He's one full second behind your race leader, Chris Ferguson. James, we know, based on past years, usually somewhere between laps eight and ten. The leader gets to the back of the field, yep. and Chris Ferguson appears to be on pace for that again here tonight. He's about a half a straight away behind the tail end of the field with the youngster Tristan Chamberlain into his first World 100 in his first attempt as they come out of turn number four. It is still Chris Ferguson, Mason Ziegler, Hudson O'Neill. They have a huge advantage over Davenport and Moran and Chris Madden. And we just saw it right there. That gap back to Jonathan Davenport is... 3.3 seconds right now. He's got to think the fast 49, just seven laps into this race, biding his time, playing his cards just right, knowing that it's a 100-lap race. Back up the front of the field, and on lap number eight, just as expected, your race leader, Chris Ferguson, has caught the tail end of the field, and Mason Ziegler quickly reeling back in Fergie. Off at turn number four, Ferguson now behind the 20 TC of Chamberlain. Here comes Ziegler, and here comes O'Neill. Chris Ferguson out of the top shelf, down the back straightaway, working his way around the Richmond, Indiana driver. Ziegler now trying to get around Alverson. O'Neill tucks in behind him. And it's still Jonathan Davenport and Devin Moran, but those top three are solid here early on with 10 complete. High speed game of cat and mouse here, James, as they go through lap traffic. Ziggy gets a little yep. high right there, coming off turn number two. And that will allow Chris Ferguson to get a little more of an advantage that allows Hudson O'Neill to easily drive underneath and reclaim the second spot away from Ziegler. Ziegler gets shuffled back to third, and there's Fergie trying to split two cars at the back of the field. That's Corey Hedgecock of the 23, the 2S, and Stormy Scott. Well, Hudson O'Neill at the top. He has clean room in front of him. There's your leader, Fergie, at the line. 12 scored here tonight. Second is O'Neill. Now Hudson O'Neill's got his momentum back up. O'Neill to the outside, working away around traffic into turn three. He's gotten around Chamberlain. He's gotten around Hoffman, working Stormy Scott as Chris Ferguson continues to show the way. But Hudson O'Neill making up time into turn number one, DJ. Yeah, Hud takes another tenth off right there, seven tenths of a second behind your race leader, Chris Ferguson. Thirteen laps into this race, Fergie inherited the pole when Mason Ziegler 
was called for a jump start on the original start, and Fergie has been the leader ever since. There's a look back through the field. There's Mason Ziegler in third. There's Jonathan Davenport running for James. He's still 2.6 seconds behind the 25Z. And don't look now, but Hudson O'Neill has caught your race leader, Chris Ferguson. Here they come out of turn four. Will we have our second new leader of the race at the stripe? It is Hudson O'Neill takes the lead on lap 15. Ziegler trying to make up time. They battle down at a turn number two. Back on the outside, Ferguson retakes the lead. Good race. Good battle there, Hudson O'Neill. And Chris Ferguson putting on a show off a of turn four. It's still O'Neill with the lead by a car length into one. Yeah, Fergie tried to get a run that time on the outside. Couldn't get it done. O'Neill trying to work by Corey Hedgecock and Jason Jameson. Those two cars working hard to stay on the lead lap in case a caution comes out. James, we've seen races here before. We're only five, six, seven cars finish on the lead lap, so you can't blame those guys. For one, pedal as hard as they can, trying to stay in front of the leader. 17 laps scored, 83 laps to go. Hudson O'Neill, Chris Ferguson, Mason Ziegler, Jonathan Davenport, Devin Moran, your top five. Now O'Neill behind the 17M of Dale McDowell. Chris Ferguson, Phil Second Ziegler. Meanwhile, Jonathan Davenport, Devin Moran, Chris Ben, Brian Shirley, Kyle Bronson, Ryan Gustin, Jimmy Owens, your top 10. Caution free so far as O'Neill to the top shelf. Him and Bobby Pierce have had the two fastest cars all weekend. And speaking of Pierce right now, he's at 11. He's only gained a couple of spots here early on in this World 100, Dustin Jarrett. Coming around to complete lap number 20. This time will be one fifth of the way through the race. Hudson O'Neill with a one point, now a 2.2 second advantage over Chris Ferguson. Fergie hung up in lap traffic, James. Down the back straightaway, Ferguson, Ziegler all over him. Mason will go to the top shelf. Mason Ziegler, former Lucas Oil, late one hundred series rookie of the year. We may have a change for second. No, it's half a car length into turn one. Ziegler's going back to the top, Dustin. Battle for a second out of turn two. Ferguson and Ziegler. Chris Ferguson has the spot. Mason Ziegler trying to take it back away. Boy, Ziggy was really good in his heat race earlier. Trying to reel back in that 22 of Chris Ferguson. And the caution flag is out for the first time. 20, well, I think 21 laps in, and Jason Jameson with trouble on the number 12. And that will bring out the caution with 21 laps scored. In the 53rd World 100, off at turn four, back green. These restarts can be wild. Keep your eyes on the front of the field. As they fan out three wide momentarily. Everyone's able to make it through turns one and two. A-OK, -okay. Fergie reclaims that second spot. Devin Moran with a good run to the inside. The fast 49 pushed up the racetrack on entry, but he gets a good run off the corner. James is able to work by Mason Ziegler to take the third spot. Devin Moore takes the third spot. On the restart, O'Neill now pulling away from Ferguson. Davenport to third, now Ziegler, Moran, and we got a caution out of the track. We got a car in the wall in turn one. Yeah, guys, Josh Rice, he got into the concrete, get into one, could not drive off of it, and a lot of right side damage on that race car. 78 laps remain. Up a turn for O'Neill and... That was rather interesting one. And Fergie got on the gas, backed out of it. O'Neill had the leader. Jonathan Davenport goes to second. Down the back straightaway. Great restart for the five-time winner of this race. Hudson O'Neill will lead off at turn number four. The complete lap number 23. Devin Moran trying to work his way up through the field on the bottom. Mason Ziegler on the outside as we pan back through the field. There you see him go three wide for seventh, eighth, and ninth. Brian Shirley, Tyler Erb, and Ryan Gustin back there. There's Bobby Pierce in the middle of all that, and Shirley gets in the wall down in turns three and four. He's able to gather it back up and wrestle the car off, but not before he loses a few positions. Early on here, Tyler Earp started in 16th. He's up to ninth right now in the number one car. Speaking of number one car, O'Neill took the lead, as you mentioned, back on lap 15. He's led it ever since. Davenport second, and then right now, Ziegler and Ferguson. But Devin Moran trying to get it to go side to side down the back straight away with third. And Ziegler and Ferguson. Fifth is Moran, sixth is Madden, seventh runs Bronson. Then it's Gustin, Herb, Tyler Herb, and then Shirley. Pierce has only picked up. Pierce still running back at 11th. Thornton is running 15th, Dustin. 
Yeah, I've been watching Pierce these last few laps. He's, he's trying to get that high side rolling. He's got Jimmy Owens, of all people, up there with him. Kyle Strickler up there with him as well. Whoa, a, look out, turn. Whoa. Herb slid up the track right alongside Strickler. That was a near disaster. Yes, it was again. We see those guys right yep. there, James. They're starting to get that high yep. side rolling. It's working maybe a little better down in one and two right now than it is in three and four. They're starting to get three and four cleaned up as well. Pierce, Owens, Turbo, Strickler, and the others trying to work the high side of this Hell and Half Mile High Bank Oval. Yeah, they're racing all over. Now Hudson O'Neill, he sees the tail end of the field. They go into turn one. He goes there as well. Then it's Davenport, Ziegler, Fergie, and Matt. Now he tail into the field, Hudson O'Neill. Into turn three as we work lap 30 with 70 to go. Off at turn four, Davenport trying to keep him in the sights. It's gonna get interesting here as they will hit traffic coming out of turn number two, Dustin. Yeah, your two leaders, James, turning nearly identical lap times uh, for about the last three laps now. 16-6, 16-7, 16-8 for that lead duo, a 1.3 second advantage. For Hudson O'Neill on lap 30 will shrink just a little bit here on lap number 31 as the Rocket One has once again caught the tail end of the field and Garrett Alverson about to go a lap down. They are still racing all over this track through the field. O'Neill now digging hard at the bottom up against that wall. Davenport second. Ziegler right there and then Ferguson. O'Neill now behind the 23 of Corey Hitchcock. Out in turn number two, the Valva League Gunners, honey. Swiper Cam Francis going to be careful as that Tristan Chamberlain right there in front of him as they come off at turn number four. And the youngster, the two Indiana drivers going into one. Still has a lead about five car lengths over Davenport down the back straightaway as we work lap number 34. Man, so tough if you're Hudson O'Neill out front, James, because I mean, again, you know there's you know there's 67 laps. You can see it on the video board, but you also know that the best driver at Eldora Speedway over the last 10 years is now up to second and probably closing in on you. And that's Jonathan Davenport as Jason Fager is about to go one lap down to your race leader. Fager started this race in six. By the way, Bobby Pierce is up to six. He's glued to the wall coming out of turn four. Pierce started back in 13th. He did the same at Florence back in August and won that. The Sunoco North-South 100. O'Neill now into turn number three three as they come, and Pierce. here goes Pierce. Picks up another spot around Chris Madden. Bobby Pierce able to clear Chris Madden. Now gonna try to work his way by Chris Ferguson. BPL and Madden gets back by BP32. So Madden gonna reclaim that fifth spot, try to bring Devin Moran with him. Pierce gonna try to get that high side rolling once again. Down the back straightaway, he started 13th. That's the battle for fifth, fourth and fifth on your screen. Fergie in fourth, Pierce in fifth, Madden in sixth. Shannon Babs slows in the middle of the back straight away. He will call it a world 100. Last time around, it was 1.699 seconds. O'Neill up in turn four. He continues to stretch that lead out, Dustin, as he crosses the start finish line. And he's got 38 in the books yeah, with yeah, the actually, lead in the world 100. Yeah, he gained another couple tenths there on Jonathan Davenport as well. Davenport's got a pretty sizable advantage himself over your third place car of Mason Ziegler. As there's a look at Ziegler and Ziegler might be the next driver to fall to the clutches of Bobby Pierce, who on the high side of the racetrack is looking for a podium finish and then some. He's got it rolling on the bottom out of turn number two. Bobby Pierce from 13th to four, trying to get around Ziegler. Meanwhile, Hudson O'Neill's already off a turn four at the loop. He still has the lead, then it's Davenport. Here comes Ziggy, here comes Pierce, and the caution is out. We got a car in the wall, and it is Devin Moran. It is, Devin Moran has grabbed the concrete over in turns three and four, and the Dresden, Ohio driver looks like he's taken the gloves off and his hopes at winning a World 100 may have just come to an end here with 40 laps scored, 60 laps remaining in the World 100. Hey guys, real quick, Devin Moran cut a right front tire. Tire exploded on him, he's out. Tough, tough break, there's Devin Wiley. Chuck Kimball. And again, he was running in sixth in this race. Here we go. On the restart, it's Hudson O'Neill and Jonathan Davenport with 40 down in the 53rd World 100. Green flag is back out. Davenport, they try to make a move right here on the one with a one swing wide. We've seen what a good run these guys can get off corner number two. Not gonna happen right there. Instead, Mason Ziegler gonna slide back up in front of Bobby Pierce. 
Here's going to try to slide under him in three and four. He'll do it. Ziggy going to try to cross him over. Oh, man, there's still three wide coming up in turn four. Gustin made a heck of a move on the bottom. Big clear will slide up the track in front of Pierce. Pierce will do the crossover down the back straight away. Bobby Pierce looks like he's going to go from 13th to third as O'Neill continues to lead as Pierce trying to keep it out of the wall here on the main straightaway. Oh, man, that was good there for a couple laps between those two. Pierce now in sole possession of third. But James, there's still 58 laps to go. When these guys run the high side like that, you always, always worry if they're using their equipment up a little too soon. Well, he's going to go for it. You know that. It's not a points race for any series or any drivers. So down the back straight away. O'Neill stretched it out over to Avonport. Here's his third, Ziegler fourth, Ferguson fifth, and it's Owens, Gustin, Bronson, Marler, and Shirley, your top ten. I mean, that is a <laughs> – you watch that 32 up there, man, especially coming off uh, coming off four, and that is a razor-thin line. There's a look back at Ryan Gustin, who runs seventh, Kyle Bronson, who runs eighth, solid effort for those two drivers, as we are now just five laps shy of halfway in the 53rd World 100. O'Neill's got a – I don't know, about a 12, 15 car length advantage. Now Pierce trying to reel in Davenport. As they come out of turn four, we work lap 46. Four shy of the halfway mark. O'Neill continues to lead here. Three cautions in this race. Took the lead, as you mentioned, back on lap 15. That's O'Neill. I mean, just yeah. looking solid out front. 1.8 second advantage. He's been putting about two to three tenths a lap. On Jonathan Davenport, and he'll put another tenth on him right there, James. This time by 27 laps in the books, and HUD once again closing in the back of the field. So we look back on the battle for fourth between Mason Ziegler and the 25Z, and trouble for Bobby Pierce down in turns three and four, and the caution flag is out. Wow. Wow. And he's unstrapping the helmet. That's it. His night is done. Bobby Pierce out of the 53rd World 100. Yellow lights are off. We're going to go back to green flag racing this time. 47 laps down, three laps shy of halfway. Hudson O'Neill, Jonathan Davenport, Mason Ziegler, your top three. Back underway. Here comes Ziegler on the bottom. Jimmy Owens behind him. Davenport to the top shelf, down the back straightaway. O'Neill continues to lead. Ziegler, battle there, trying to go two, three wide. Here comes Gustin through the middle. Gustin has been great on restarts here tonight. O'Neill leads off a turn four, Dustin. Chris Madden lost a cylinder. Thank you for that, Kyle McFadden. Tough break for the driver at a great court in South Carolina. His Eldora Speedway crown jewel drought continues. His man. Strickler and yeah. Brian, how did he make it through there? Uh, you and I were watching the same thing, James. There's Strickler right there is uh, that battle back there for about uh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Just got real hairy coming off turn number two. Those two guys are throttle masters. And ah, the caution is out on the front straightaway, and Shane Clayton's got a tire down at 25. Flat right rear for the driver that won this race back in 2008, Shane Clanton. And one lap shy of halfway, the fifth caution flag of the race will fly. Back underway, we'll go green and then halfway. Green flag is out, we're back underway in the 53rd World 100. Jonathan Davenport swings way wide, trying to get that run off the second corner, James. Side by side for third behind him, Chris Ferguson trying to get that same run on Mason Ziegler. Ryan Gustin right there on the inside as well. And at the halfway point, cross flag shows the field, 50 down, 50 remaining. Hudson O'Neill leads, and James, here comes Jonathan Davenport into three. Doing that, Jonathan Davenport thinks in, at the World 100 off at turn four. It's a two-car breakaway, and Davenport will throw the slider into one. Might have threw a little bit of an elbow to take the lead. Jonathan Davenport out in front at Eldora. What else is new? This time by, 52 laps going up on the scoreboard, and Jonathan Davenport finds himself in a familiar position at the front of the field at Eldora in the World 100. O'Neill trying to stay with him as they come off at turn four. Mason Ziegler is third. Chris Ferguson fourth. Ryan Gustin runs in fifth. Davenport using the top here. 
Hudson O'Neill's Hudson O'Neill's uh, got up on the wheel here these last couple laps, James. He may not have been expecting the 49 to go around him on the outside like that. And now he's pedaling hard to try to keep pace with the five-time World 100 champion. And those two have just wow. put an yeah. absolute spanking on the field as they are out front by 3.1 seconds over third place Mason Ziegler. Do you think Davenport once had to use up his tires? He's making him run hard down the back straightaway. They're going to pick up the tail end of the field here if this thing stays green. Hudson O'Neill trying to stay close. Both cars working well. Plenty of racing room here in this main event. They'll go into one. Davenport, O'Neill down to the bottom. It'll be about a car length advantage out of turn number two as we work lap 57. Great camera work there as those two continue to play that high speed game of cat and mouse, stretching out their lead over four seconds. This lead duo now leads third place Mason Ziegler and Hunt with another run down to the inside and a battle for the lead. Yeah, they're half a lap ahead of about fifth place. O'Neill working back to the bottom. Out at turn number four, Davenport O'Neill. Putting on a show at Eldor. They're going to go side by side at turn number two. Down the straightaway. And Davenport still has that top shelf. We're used to seeing Davenport down low. Here comes Hunt on the bottom. They're side by side off of four. At the line, it's still Davenport by a car length. We'll have 40 to go next time around. I'm with Randy Weaver. I just It just doesn't look like the 49 is driving that hard. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm wrong. And now they're going to do a little bit of roll reversal as Davenport goes to the inside. O'Neill goes up to the high side. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. This is Corey fun. Fosfed, crew chief for Davenport. Danny White, crew chief. Now, remember, they can't use stick signals. Now, Davenport goes down low. O'Neill was running good early up top. He's got the momentum. JD still leads. All eyes up front, Dustin. Yeah, Into man. one and two. <laughs> This is fun, man. 39 laps to go. Who's got what it takes? A five second advantage for this lead duo over Ziegler. Ferguson and Brian Shirley now rounds out the top five with 38 laps to go. In the turn number one, Davenport, again as you had the roll reversal, now Davenport back on top. O'Neill down the back straightaway. We caught a car slowing the inside out of the race. I believe that's Earl Pearson Jr. They come off of four. They could run anywhere on this racetrack. Either one of them guys. They could run the middle, they could run the top, they could run the bottom out of turn number two with 63 complete. That's just unbelievable. They are 5.8 seconds ahead of third place Mason Ziegler. <laughs> That's unreal. The, uh, the pace these two are setting and the fact that they are so close to each other on the racetrack. And here's the other thing as well, James, with only, uh, what, 17 cars still on the racetrack, the lap traffic is not what it was at the start of the race. That lap traffic, number one, there's not as many cars on the track, so there's not as much of it. But number two, the back of the field is spread out a lot more than what it would have been 30, 35, 40 laps ago. And now we're starting to see Jonathan Davenport pull away by a few car lengths from Hudson O'Neill as this battle for third rages on. Man, Chris Ferguson's got a good run on Mason Ziegler. Great battle for the lead, great battle here side by side. Third and fourth, Ziegler and Ferguson. Fifth is Brian Shirley. But they are way behind the leader. They're a straight away behind Davenport. O'Neill, that goes to that top. As they come out of turn number four, he gets the run down the main straightaway. 67 complete, 33 to go. Down the back straightaway. I think O'Neill and both of them are just trying to see which Lines the better, either that or trying to cool off their tires. And Dustin, here comes O'Neill, has a run down the front straightaway. The eyeball test, James, is uh, maybe a little early, but what do you think? It's good. Down the back straightaway, it's about four car lengths. O'Neill will dive right there. Davenport got a little squirrely there. Off at turn four. It's four car lengths into turn one. It's five. Tenths of a second for the lead at the bottom, oh. and the caution is out. Oh, PSG. Oh, we should have had a PSG, and I believe it's Jimmy, Jimmy Owens. Yep, oh, guys, Jim, Jimmy Owens back here on the back stretch. I believe a right front. We'll have to keep an eye on the right front tire. Oh, man, oh, man. He had been running inside the top ten as well. It's 31 laps to go. 
Davenport chooses the inside lane. Hudson O'Neill outside. Ziegler, Ferguson, surely rounds out the top five. We're back underway. And a good restart for Ziegler. A good restart for O'Neill. Ziegler to the outside. O'Neill and his slip back by Ziegler. Mike Marler got a great restart. And the battle continues up front. Brian Shirley slammed to fourth. Brandon Shepard on the move in the B5. He started 18th. He also made a pit stop. Yes, B. Shep working his way through the field. Now side by side for the third spot on your screen. Mason Ziegler has it. Brian Shirley, a prelim winner here last night, trying to take it away. Back at the front of the field, James. Hudson O'Neill rim riding around this half mile oval, trying to gain ground on your race leader, Jonathan Davenport, with 20. Nine laps to go in the World 100. He'll go to the bottom. He'll go through the middle. JD still leads. 28 to go. The deficit is seven tenths of a second. For the driver trying to equal the great Billy Moyer with six wins. O'Neill trying to track him down. Here comes O'Neill down on the bottom. He's cut it down about three car lengths off of turn number four. Ziegler third, Shirley fourth. Shepard fifth trying to pedal hard back here side by side. Mike Marler and I think uh, Ferguson might have touched here on the main straightaway, Dustin. That's the battle for sixth and seventh. That is, and that happens well behind this lead duo right now. Jonathan Davenport and Hudson O'Neill. And once again, Davenport unable to shake himself free from the Rocket One. Next time by, there will be 25 laps to go. Worth noting the fans at home as well, James, during racing action, the video has been removed from the video board. Only the running order is shown when cars are on the racetrack. That way drivers can't watch the race happening on the video board in turn two. Jonathan Davenport down. The bet's a good note to make there. Down at the Davenport, now he'll go back to the top. Here comes O'Neill. Boy, O'Neill really gains that momentum up top. Down the main straightaway. 76 laps complete. And the caution is out, and we got a car down, and it's Ricky Thornton Jr. in turn four, DJ. Yeah, the 20 RT may have made a little contact. I thought he may, may, might have made some contact with the outside wall. Looks like he may have some damage there on the spoiler on the right side of that race car, and that will put us under caution for the seventh time in this race with 76 laps complete, 24 laps remaining. The 53rd running of the World 100. Here they come on the restart. And Davenport, the master of the restart. So Neil is well into one. Here comes Brian Shirley on the bottom. They have a three car battle for lead here briefly. Ziegler's got it wound up up top. He and Ferguson go door to door. Here comes O'Neill, thinking about it, thinking about it. They'll go side by side off a of turn four. At the line, it is still by a car link. Davenport into one. 23 laps to go. But Dav Davenport also, James, he just, he never gets that right side or the right rear of the race car clear up on the cushion, especially down in one and two. He's going to ride it at least for a little bit oh. down in three and four. Oh, and Hudson O'Neill gets a little too high as Sparkler's flying off the one down in three and four. Yeah, he bumped it up there a little bit. Now he'll get the momentum out of turn number two, Shirley. Ferguson is still in four. Ziegler McDowell started 27th. He's now sixth, and it's Gustin Shepard, Urban Strickler. James worth noting as well that because Please. of the Lucky Dog Award that Eldora Speedway awards right now, all 16 drivers on the track, unofficially, all 16 drivers on the track are on the lead lap. Jonathan Davenport at Hudson O'Neill off at of turn number four. In the one, 20 laps to go. Down the back straightaway. About Brian Shirley now up to third. James, as we look back here, on this battle for sixth, seventh, and eighth, Mason Ziegler in sixth, Ryan Gustin in seventh, and Brandon Shepard in the eighth position. Dale McDowell has worked his way. <laughs> Dale McDowell doing Dale McDowell things, James, from 27th to fifth here at Eldora. Last time around, DJ, he cut it down two tenths of a second. It's going to be even closer. O'Neill is reeling him in down the main straightaway with seven tenths of a second. It's down to six. He Maybe. knocked another tenth of a second off. There it is. O'Neill down the back straightaway. 18 laps to go. O'Neill setting him up. If this thing stays green, I don't know who's going to win it. The is Rocket it? House car has never won. Nor finished second. Or finished second. Unbelievable stat. The state of Indiana has never won the World 100. Is this the year it happens? Hudson O'Neill led laps 15 to 51 
He wants to try to lead lap 100. He is right there. If this thing stays green, Davenport out at two. O'Neill will get the run down the back straight away. We'll have 15 laps to go this time around. O'Neill setting him up. It's down to two car lengths off of turn four. This crowd will, this massive crowd will come unglued. The Eldora Dominator, the last, what, eight years and down the back straight away. O'Neill trying to keep it out of the wall. They'll have 14 to go this time around. They will pick up the tail end of the field. That is Ricky Thornton Jr. to turn one. Notice Jonathan Davenport changed his line a little bit down and turns one and two, James, entering in just a little bit higher, coming off the corner just a little bit higher. And he's done that the last couple laps. And as he's done that, he's been able to put just a little bit of ground between himself and Hudson O'Neill. But James, Hudson O'Neill on the high side, man, when he hits it right, he's able to keep pace with and even cut a little bit of time off J.D.'s lead. It was eight-tenths of a second that time around as they work lap 88 to 11 dozen to go. Hudson O'Neill gets that run into turn four. He still got him in his sights. In the one, it's still eight-tenths of a second. Davenport, O'Neill will close down the back straight away. Still about four or five car lengths the advantage. Brian Shirley is pedaling hard. He's in third, coming on strong as they come down the main straightaway. Dustin, next time around, 10 laps to go. The deficit is down to five tenths of a second, and here comes Hudson O'Neill. And they're gonna catch the back of the field too, James, if this thing stays green. Hud drives it deep into three and four. Clears Jonathan Davenport. Come off corner number four with 10 laps to go. Davenport crosses him over and stays out front. Here it goes again, O'Neill. Let's see what he's gonna do. He goes to the outside for the lead. There's side by side at a turn three. Nine to go. Move over, 2006. Oh, they're at it at the line. It's a Carly Davenport. O'Neill's going to throw the slider into one. Up top, and he slides. He's got the momentum now down the back straight away, and Hudson O'Neill is retaking the lead. Are you kidding me, Dustin Jarrett? They got two cars. Bronson and Thornton are running side by side in front of them. Eight laps to go. Hudson O'Neill, your leader that time by at the scoring loop. First time he has led since lap 51. Trying to get the first win for Rocket One, the first win for the Hoosier State here at the World 100. Seven laps to go for the New Deal. He is driving for all it's worth, isn't he? Out at turn number two, he just celebrated his 23rd birthday this week. He will be six laps away as he'll dispose of Kyle Bronson. Meanwhile, Brian Shirley is catching Jonathan Davenport for a second, Dustin Jarrett. Yes, he is. Brian Shirley quickly closing in on the fast 49. This is 1.3 seconds behind your race leader. Less than six laps to go in the 53rd running of the World 100. Jonathan Davenport going to try to tiptoe around the top and close back in on Hudson O'Neill. Shirley trying to gain on both of them. James, five laps to go and a 1.7 second lead for HUD. HUD on the outside of Ricky Thorne Jr. Those two are the top two of the Lucas Oil Late Monitor Series points. O'Neill to the outside. Thornton will leave him plenty of room. Down the straightaway. Four laps to go. He got in the wall a little bit. Oh, he needs to get around Thornton. And he will. Clear track in front of him down the back straightaway. Davenport and Shirley. It's 1.7 seconds behind. Three laps to go. Dustin Jarrett. We've seen it, man. Anything can happen here at Eldora. Right side damage on Jonathan Davenport's number 49. He smacked the wall the last time by. Brian Shirley still trying to close in. But right now, with a 1.6 second advantage, it's all Hudson O'Neill out front. James, he comes off corner number four to two laps to go. You know he wants it to stay green. He doesn't want to have a two lap shootout with Jonathan Davenport. Brian Shirley is third. McDowell is climbing to fourth. Ferguson is fifth. Whoa! As they come into turn three now, he's got to beware of Kyle Strickler off the floor. Strickler's off the pace! Strickler is off the pace and the caution is out! The caution is out for Kyle Strickler. Hudson O'Neill did not want to see that because that will set up a two lap shootout. Unbelievable. You cannot script this kind of stuff. All right, O'Neill's going to pick the bottom. Green, white, checkered. There we go. Here we go. O'Neill and Davenport, Shirley and McDowell. 
They'll go green, white, checkered off a of turn number four back underway. Brian, Here comes Shirley. Brian Shirley trying to stick a nose to the inside. It's McDowell holding an ace in his pocket. Shirley with a run on the bottom. Look at Ziegler up top. Here comes Davenport down the back straight away. White flag. One lap to go. Neil getting back to the top. Davenport, he'll have one last chance, Dustin, in the turn number one. You know what's coming in the three. O'Neill out of two down the back straight away. He'll pull away. Yep. He will not have a shot. James, bring us home. Back home again in Indiana. He did it. Hudson O'Neill wins the world 100. Second spot will go to Jonathan Davenport. Dale McDowell third. Fourth unofficially Brian Shirley and what about the run for Tanner yep. English yep who unofficially rounds out the top five Mason Ziegler sixth Chris Ferguson seventh <laughs> Brian Gustin eighth Tyler Erb ninth and guys Brandon Shepard unofficially rounds out the top ten DJ James yep. yeah Eldora is back let's yep. go Race fans, let him hear it. Hudson O'Neill wins the World 100. <laughs> oh. Oh. The thrill of victory in his dad's waiting on him. A big hug from his dad, Don. Mark's down here waiting. This one's been a long time coming. As Huddy gets it done, and I tell you what, nothing more special than victory lane at Eldora. We've seen a lot of moments here. Hudson hugs Mark Richards. And big, big hug and Mark's kiss to his crying. girlfriend. Mark's crying. I Benji. mean, this is, a, uh, this is a big deal, man. These guys have tried here for a lot of years. Steve Baker, co-owner of Rocket One Racing, Rocket Chassis. A big hug, and we're going to get HUD up here. Dude, you let those tears roll. You earned this thing here tonight. Hudson, I'm just going to say it. You are a World 100 champion. What does that mean, my friend? <sighs> what a dream, man. Uh, I was this tall coming here, sitting up there with my grandparents. I wasn't allowed in the pits, and... I watched my dad come so close so many times, and, and I let so much of it, and J.D. got by me, and I, I didn't really get discouraged, but I knew it was going to be hard to get back by him. And I don't know. I just uh, I gave it everything I had. I, I, I drove my heart out. I just uh, I didn't know. And <laughs> I said every cuss word there was under that last <laughs> caution, too. <laughs> But, uh, man, I, I don't know. Mark, Rocket Chassis, they've worked so hard to try and win this race, and they won the dream, and it, it, he just told me 50 years. 50 years it took him to win this race. And to, to, this isn't for me, this is for Mark. To, to, to say I'm, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not the fortunate one here, uh, or I am the fortunate one here, but I, I owe all the thanks to Mark. He's... Uh, He's gave me such a great race car to, uh, to come out here all three days and just be consistently fast and put me in a position to win that race. So thank you to him, Danny, Joel, Austin, my dad, my grandparents, my girlfriend. Uh, man, I got so much family here. It's, it's amazing. And all you fans that came and seen me at the T-shirt trailer today, Got autographs, bought a t-shirt. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'm so thankful. Look at this. Check it out. Did you ever dream you would have a globe you earned, you raced your ass off for, and you made this place come to their feet watching you do it? My girlfriend don't know what's going in my living room right in front of the TV. <laughs> Hudson, it's been, a, it's been a challenging past week or so for this team. It's been a challenging year. It's been up and down, man. And I know you, you've, I've seen the look of dejection on your face when you feel like you've given some away. Tonight, though, you know what Mark and Steve and this whole team have worked for. I think we know where the damn hauler's parking from now on in the back row. To give them that, though, are there any words you can use to describe? When you see Mark Richards in tears, I don't think I've ever seen that. What, what does that mean? Uh, I'd never give up, grit. That's all words that describe Mark Richards and Rocket Chassis. They've, 
they fought from behind uh, for the last couple of years, and they just keep calling and calling and calling. And we've had such a great race car all year long. And I just I felt like we haven't taken taken advantage of the speed we have, but this weekend we were able to. So uh, I'm just happy that uh, I'm able to be standing up here, man. I, I don't have the words. But first and foremost, after my guys, i got to thank everybody on this race car. Valvoline, Soybert Calf Ranches, O'Neill Savage Recycling, WR1 Sim Chassis, Snowco Race Fuels, uh, Ace Metal Works, Performance Grading, Gunners Honey, uh, Integra Racing Shocks, Kaiser Manufacturing, uh, Rocket Pre-Owned, Rocket Chassis. Uh, oh, there's so many little people that pitch in throughout, and uh, <clears throat> every one of them means so much. Every one of them that bolts something on this car, they're the reason why we're up here having success. We don't have any part failures. or It's, uh, it's just a testimony to this team and how hard they work, and uh, they've been chasing this for so long, man, and I, I'm just truthful, <laughs> truthfully, I'm... I'm quite speechless, but <laughs> thanks to everybody. Um, yeah, this is going to be a good one to celebrate. I can't wait. Race fans, for the first time ever, Hudson O'Neill is a World 100 champion. Before we go to second and third, what do we do with Mark? Mark, come on up, man. Mark, so many years trying, so many years trying to get this globe. What are the emotions like now for you? Oh, they're pretty high. Uh, for me, it's high. Uh, 50 years ago I walked through that gate in 1974 and watched the first World 100 that I seen and then in 75 we came back to race that race and I've been at almost every one of them since and it's just been you know uh, uh, something that just seemed like was never going to happen because you know with Rodney Combs we, should prob I, we probably should have won it three or four times. We had engine failure and some other stuff and then uh, you know with um, Davey Johnson you know, he was leading this thing, driving away, and the track rubbered up, and we ended up running third. Josh, a couple times in 2006, probably one of the best races ever. It was only his second, time, his second year of racing, you know, we had a chance to win that race. And uh, there was a couple others that Josh probably could have won. You know, he was really close to winning. Uh, we had a bumper break off one of them. But to come back here and do it with Hudson, the first year for him driving Rocket won, I mean, uh, it's great. Do we have a new place to park the hauler? Are we done with the front row? I just told Tony now that we got to take care of that two-seater, that we really need that spot. So hopefully that we get that spot when we come back here for the Dirt Track World Championship. Race fans, Mark Richards, Steve Baker, team owners, Rocket One Racing, they win the World 100 with Hudson O'Neill. Let's head over to our second and third place finishers. Yeah, guys, uh, coming home second. Uh, I tell you what, Jonathan, going for number six, is there anything you think you could have done any different there those last 15 laps or so? No, not at all. That was, that was all I had. Uh, just uh, Moyer's record is going to live on for another year. So, uh, anyway, uh, congratulations to Hudson. You know, I thought we, we was pretty good there because I could run off the cushion and, and was pretty good, and it just kept building up more and more. And uh, once he got to a big curb there, he, he, was, he was just a little better than we was. I tried to run it behind him, and, and just wasn't as good as uh, he was. We just was set up to, you know, use, like our normal deal, run run middle down or whatever. But uh, just hats off to my guys. Uh, they're doing a great job. You know, uh, we brought this cool-looking car here, and, and uh, you know, it showed speed again. So uh, this whole car here has uh, been really good here. Um, it ain't been beaten a while, but, uh, so, um, but, you know, second's still great. You know what I mean? So just got to thank all these fans for coming out. Um, thanks to Nutrinac Solutions, ASC Warranty. Dyna Gross Seed. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> uh, Bill Stein Shocks, Longhorn Chassis. Um, you know, everybody that helps us on this thing. I'd like to thank Lance and Darla watching back home. Steve, uh, my wife, Rachel, and Blaine, everybody that supports us out on the road. Uh, we just come up a little bit short, but it wasn't for lack of effort. Well, one more thing before I let you go. Back in the 90s, you know, mid-90s, 2000s, they had three drivers, Bloomquist, Moyer, Moran. You're already at number five. It's only a matter of time before you – Probably have more World 100 wins than, uh, than the go, Billy Moyer. So congratulations for myself. I know everybody, all these awesome fans. You are the man. You're at the top. And uh, I know one got away from you, but man, oh, man, the, the accolades that, that you continue and your success, it's, it's just amazing to see this, this 49 car up front time and time again, especially here at Eldora. Well, I definitely appreciate it. It's, a, it's an event here at Eldora, whether it's at the world or the dream. You know, it takes – it takes so long to, to get to the top there and to stay there as just far as, you know, all this, 
stipulations that go on through the weekend and uh, just to fight adversity. And it's this is a hard race to win for sure. And I'm just uh, lucky to do it how many times I have done it and lucky to run second, really. So we'll, we ain't going to hold our heads down. We're going to keep them up high and uh, go on for the rest of the year and try to come back here and get us a championship. You're the man, Jonathan. Congratulations on second. Thank you. How about it, race fans, for Superman, Jonathan Davenport. Coming home in third. We're going to squeak through here. Started all the way back, if I'm not, if I'm correct, 27th starter. Dale, congratulations on uh, what a run, what a magical season. And, uh, man, you, you end up on the podium here. I know you had to start way in the back. The weekend probably didn't go the way you thought maybe it would. I know uh, Thursday the track was a little fast, and you said you were all, you manned up, said we were all on the same track. But, man, tonight you just got up on the wheel, drove over from 27th to 3rd. Hell of a run. Congratulations, Mac Daddy. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, it, it, all the credit goes to, to the guys working, Shane and Landon and, and uh, Dave and Chad, everybody that's helping on the car out there. I mean, we just struggled and got behind. And I wished I could say I just drove it harder and it was me, but but we had to get the car balanced. So it come back around to us, and uh, I'm just going to have to figure out how to start better up here and, and uh, you know, and hopefully we'll have a, a, a better finish, you know, than get up there and dice with them. And then I cost myself on some restarts and stuff tonight. But Nick really never dreamed I got up, up this far, so it's surprising to me. So uh, got a lot of people behind us. I need to thank Easy Go, Klotz, Cometic, uh, CSA Connect Strategy Advisors, uh, uh, SNH Systems, uh, Camel Installation, MS Motors, uh, Clements, uh, Benetton's companies, BlackRock, all, all of those companies. Uh, uh, Northeast Fabrication Jeep's here. He has grooving tires for us. Uh, just uh, Fox Shocks and Team Zero Race Cars and. Just everybody, uh, Sean Field, headers, er everybody that's a part of helping this old guy go up and down the road. I appreciate them. Well, I tell you what, for myself and uh, everybody watching, you know, some of the uh, the veterans of our sport, you know, I, I, they continue to preach the youth and the youth. How special, how special is each and every event you come to, especially here at the Dream, but especially here at the World. And to not only, you know, I know you started way back there, but to prove to yourself and these loyal race fans to show them that you still got it in you, man. Well, it, it, uh, I mean, it's, it's really an honor to run this good. And with these guys, man, these guys are awesome, awesome to race with. They race hard, race their heart out. Thanks to those race fans for coming out. Seeing all those lights and all everything up there, you know, was, was uh, amazing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, have, when you line up with these guys and I've raced with their dads more than I've raced with them, it's crazy, you know. <laughs> so, so uh, but, but it's a... Uh, it's a, it's a good night for us, and Tiff, and you know, is here with us, and Sarah. She's such a good, big supporter, my sister-in-law, and team owner, part team owner, and, and uh, so just thanks to everybody. I, I appreciate you guys, and hopefully we can come back and get a, at least another podium, and maybe another win here before we call it off. Well, we love to see the twinkle in your eye. Keep coming back, Dale. Thank you, guys. How about it? Coming home third, Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell.